Morning. Another day, another rear wheel test. Today we're doing on the largest Samsung tablet ever, the Samsung Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra. In this video, we're gonna talk about some of the things that I like and don't like about the Tab S8 Ultra, all while we kind of explore. But first things first. Coffee. Check. And if you're not familiar, welcome to my filming studio. I share this space with two other YouTubers that you might know, Michael Fisher from Mr. Mobile and Jaime Rivera from Pocket Now. But while we're here, let's talk about the design of this tablet. And the first thing that everyone notices, even strangers just watching you, it's massive. Here it is next to the largest iPad Pro, which was one of the biggest tablets you could buy before this came along. In fact, it's bigger than a lot of laptop screens out. It's also one of the thinnest tablets I've ever used and the materials that they used, it feels very premium, which is probably good considering the price of this tablet, which we'll get to in a bit. Now for that money though, it does come with an S Pen, which we'll dive into a bit later. But first thing I wanna talk about is the placement of where you put it. It's here on the back, on this little bar that's very specific for it and magnetically attaches to that. When you do attach it, it does automatically charge and you get a notification on the screen to let you know that it's doing so. But that placement on the back, well, it's, it's kind of weird because if you put the tablet down now with it on the back, it raises it ever so slightly, which, you know, honestly might be useful like to have it at that bit of an angle if you were say using the S Pen because then, you know, it'd be more like a, like just at a better angle to sketch. But obviously there's a problem because you have to remove the S Pen to use the S Pen and then it's flat again. It just feels like a weird place to put the S Pen. Unlike maybe say on one of the sides, like the iPad mini, for example, does. Now, something I wanted to try was the book cover keyboard, which you can buy from Samsung, which allows you to kind of turn this into a laptop, but it also protects that S Pen with a little like kind of whole flap thing. The issue with this though, is that it costs an extra $350, which is a lot, which just makes this already very expensive tablet even more expensive. But speaking of keyboard cases, one of my favorite brands for those is today's sponsor, Bridge. Bridge, based in Park City, Utah, is the fastest growing tablet keyboard for iPad and Surface products. And it's honestly no surprise, they've won plenty of awards for their keyboards that are just solid and well-made, frankly. Honestly, the one I've owned for a while for the iPad Pro always gets people asking me, what MacBook is that? And it really does feel like one of the only keyboard cases I've used that match the design of Apple and Microsoft's Surface line. Beyond that though, they also make vertical docks for your MacBook, and they even make universal docks that work with Mac and Windows seamlessly. And Bridge believe in that seamless connection between the world around us by reducing friction between you and your workflow with tools that allow you to be your most productive self anytime, anywhere. And they also make all of this solid hardware at a price point that doesn't suck. Check out all the stuff that they make at the link below. And thanks to Bridge for sponsoring this video. What the? Got open like a can opener. About time spring. It's still cold, by the way. This is one of my favorite Philly cheesesteaks in New York City. And actually, if I'm being honest with myself, in all of the Northeast, including Philly, where they're like originally from. A lot of Philadelphians can be real mad at me for that, but they're from Philly. Does that help? Ugh. I mean, come on. So good. While we're here, let's talk a little bit more about this tablet. Okay, now again, it is a large tablet. It's also quite heavy. It's heavier than any other tablets that I've used, but it has one of the best screens on a tablet I've ever seen. And Samsung, honestly, is just very good at screens. Its contrast is really good. The colors just pop and it's super bright. I can even see it just fine out here in the sun. And so for multimedia or gaming, that great screen and the fact that it is a very large tablet and large screen is a good thing. Now, speaking of gaming and performance, it is very snappy and it should be. It's running the latest chipset. It has plenty of RAM and it is running Android. So essentially, performance-wise, any Android app that you would run on this thing runs smoothly. And of course, since it is running Android, the games that you would probably play on it are all, well, they're gonna want you to use your hands, which is, you can do, but 
mm, it, I don't recommend it. If you are going to play games on this, it's probably better to use a remote and also maybe one of these cases that has a kickstand for the display, and then in which case, I mean, that's actually a good gaming experience. And then we have the pen, which honestly is great. Latency is really low, it's really nice to write on the screen with, and because it has such a large screen, it actually gives you just more space to sketch or take notes, and it's, it, it's kind of nice. And since it is an S Pen, essentially, you get all the normal stuff that you get when you're using an S Pen on a phone from Samsung. Okay, and I'm cold because it's it's still not actually spraying, it's pretending. So let's, uh, let's go inside and talk more about the tablet. Now, honestly, I don't really care too much about the camera on a tablet, but I know that some people maybe kind of do, probably not, but maybe there's like one. So there you go. So that one person, you got one photo. But unlike the camera in the back that I don't care that much about, the front camera on these, well, that's more important for video calls, if nothing else. And this tablet actually has two front cameras, oddly enough. We have this main one, and then we also have this ultra wide one as well. Quality's not as good on the ultra wide as we're kind of used to with all cameras on every phone and tablet ever, but interesting that they have two. Right now I'm at a relatively new coffee shop in my neighborhood called Pink Frog Cafe. And I'm actually coming here a little more often lately. It just has like a very unique vibe compared to the rest of the coffee shops in this neighborhood, especially. And the owners are actually artists themselves and they kind of created the space to help other artists, give them a place to do their craft or their art. They have a lot of free events like comedy shows and singer songwriters. They even have a stage in the middle of the coffee shop. It's just, it's a good vibe. I like it. But let's talk about the keyboard and some of the other productivity aspects. The keys are fine to type on. They're a little squishy, but you get used to it. And they also thankfully are backlit, which is important. The trackpad is also pretty good and gives you a mouse to use on the tablet, which of course can be helpful. But the thing that makes it more useful to me at least is that Samsung tablets have Dex. Now, if you're not familiar, Dex alters the UI of the tablet to make it more desktop-like with movable windows, a taskbar, etc. Dex is also available on phones from Samsung, but requires an external monitor, which for me kind of just defeats the purpose as I have to then carry a monitor around. And I might as well just bring a laptop in that case. But to have the tablet use Dex on its own display makes way more sense to me. And it's actually useful, I think. Now, the downside though, is that some apps still don't work like you'd expect on a desktop. And then there's just kind of the speed of DEX itself. Switching to multitasking mode, as a quick example, lags every time. Now regardless, I do love the idea. I just think that there has got to be a way to optimize it and fix some of the little annoyances to make it really good. Okay, calling it a night. Okay, now let's talk about the pricing. This tablet starts at $1,099, which is actually exactly the same as the iPad Pro, the largest one that they make with similar storage selected. Difference is, at least with the Tab S8 Ultra, you do get the S Pen for free, whereas that would be an extra $130 to get the Apple Pencil second generation for the iPad Pro. Now, if you have the book cover keyboard, that's an extra $350, so you're looking at a lot of money for this whole little setup. In fact, you could buy some really nice actual laptops for less than that. And for most people, not all, but most people, it's probably a better decision to just get a laptop. And it's the same thing for the iPad Pro, if we're honest. And that's not to say that it doesn't have a lot of things going for it, but it's just as hard to justify buying a tablet running a mobile operating system for that much money. You could very well go for any of the other Tab S8s in the family for a lot less money and get almost as much benefit from it. It does at least feel like the closest thing that the Android tablet world now has to an iPad Pro. There you go. I will leave the best price that I could find on the Samsung Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra in the link below for anyone who's curious about that. And thanks again to Bridge for sponsoring this video. They do actually make really nice hardware at a decent price point. So again, check them out at the link below if you're interested. As always though, regardless, thanks for watching. And if you're not familiar, welcome to What is that sound? Oh, it's the lift gate on a truck that is clearly parked right outside the building. <sighs> Brings the already high price, even an ice cream truck. It's not even warm out. Go away.
The sound of an ice cream truck plus the heater banging in this studio. Just those like very juxtaposing sounds equally as annoying. I can't make this stuff up, just everywhere I go. I feel like they're doing one for every year in the calendar. 2022. It's important work they're doing, letting people know the year that it currently is. <laughs> Can I also just vent for a second about like church bells? They used to do it a long time ago to like get people throughout the town to come to mass. Also maybe tell people the time. Neither of these things are necessary anymore in a modern world. Why do we still do this? And while we're here, dog, dog, dog. I'm watching you, it's just barking you nothing. Why? This time it's my fault. I'm sitting outside of a dog park. It was, in retrospect, that wasn't the smartest move. 